and welcome to worship today. I'm Pastor Haley Hausman from Long Creek and Dalton City United Methodist Churches. Thank you for joining us in our online worship. Today we'll begin with our call to worship, which is from Psalm 107 verses 1 through 3 and 17 through 22. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Those he redeemed from the hand of the foe, those he gathered from the lands, from east and west, from north and south. Some became fools through their rebellious ways and suffered affliction because of their iniquities. They loathed all food and drew near the gates of death. They cried to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them. He rescued them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for humankind. Let them sacrifice thank offerings and tell of his works with songs of joy. Today our opening prayer will be part of St. Patrick's Breastplate if you'll join me in prayer. Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ on my right, Christ on my left, Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit down, Christ when I arise, Christ in the heart of every person who thinks of me, Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me, Christ in every eye that sees me, Christ in every ear that hears me. Amen. Our New Testament reading today comes from John chapter 3, beginning in verse 14. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Stay tuned for our children's message. Hey friends, it's Pastor Haley. St. Patrick's Day is coming up this week on March the 17th. So for our time together today, I have a few things related to St. Patrick's Day that also can be related to our Christian faith. So one of the things that we've been talking about is the rainbow. So I've got a rainbow behind us. The rainbow reminds us of God's promises. Um, I also have a three leaf clover or a shamrock. And a three-leaf clover or a shamrock can remind us of the Trinity. So we often refer to God as the Trinity or three in one. So the three things, the three parts can remind us of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So if you see a three-leaf clover, it can remind you of God, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, the Trinity. Also related to St. Patrick's Day, I have some of my favorite cereal with me today. Maybe you had some cereal this morning for breakfast. I brought, can you guess what kind? Lucky Charms, yes. And so each one of these different kinds of marshmallows can be a reminder of us about parts of our Christian faith. So there are different parts, different marshmallows in here. We've got shooting stars, purple horseshoes, clover, the blue moon, a red, a red balloon, a rainbow charm, and a unicorn charm. So each one, I'll take them one by one and give us a little Bible thing that helps us remember um, more about God and the Bible through using our lucky charms. So the first one I'll pick up is the shooting star. So you might remember us, we've been talking in Genesis that God created the heavens and the earth and shooting stars can remind us that God knows the name of each star and he knows our names too. Next marshmallow I'll pick up is the heart. Can you guess what this one could remind us of? God loves us. 
hearts remind us of God's love for us. So kind of related to that, we'll go for the purple horseshoe, which looks like a U here. So we'll say this one can remind us of God's unending love for us. And God has also uniquely created us. So that's our horseshoe. Kind of related to a horseshoe is our unicorn. And so it's white. So it can remind us of um, the white horse that comes later at the end of the Bible in Revelation about the white horse that comes. It can also remind us of God's power and might. That's a unicorn. Next, I'll pick up the balloon, the red balloon. And the red balloon can remind us that God lifts us up. When we're feeling kind of down, God lifts us up. And we have a blue moon. Blue moons can remind us that sorrow lasts for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. And two left, we've got the clover, which can remind uh, it reminds us of the clover that I talked about a minute ago of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So clover reminds us of the Trinity. And the last one, which you know is right behind me, is the rainbow. And the rainbow reminds us of God's promises. Um, traditionally related to St. Patrick's Day, we think about rainbows and a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. But let me tell you that you are better than any pot of gold. You are God's most treasured and valued possession. So don't forget it. And let's pray. God, we thank you for your deep and abiding love for us. Thank you that we are your treasured possession. Help us to keep growing in your love. Amen. If you have a prayer request that you would like prayer for, please let me know. You can send me a message, a text message, phone call, email. I'd be glad to pray with you about something that's going on in your life or in the life of someone that you love. Will you join me in a time of prayer today? Loving God, we give you thanks for this day, for this chance for us to come together and worship you. Help us all to keep growing deeper in your love and in your grace. Help our hearts to turn back towards yours, Lord, in the places where they need to. God, we continue to lift up our world to you. We can continue to ask for your peace to rule and to reign in our hearts and in the midst of the chaos that surrounds us sometimes. Lord, we continue to lift up our healthcare workers to you. God, we give you thanks that there seems to be hope on the horizon. It has been a, a long year, Lord, that here we are and we're, we've made it this far. We thank you for your presence that has been with us and continues to be with us. God, we lift up to you today those who are heavy on our hearts, those who are in the midst of a deep season of grief. Lord, we pray for your comfort and for your peace. God, we lift up those who have health things going on. We pray for healing in their bodies. We pray for those that we know who had surgery this week. We pray for healing for them. Lord, we also want to pause now and lift up the things that are on our own hearts to you today. God, thank you for all of the ways that you allow us to be your hands and your feet. Help us to have ears that hear and hands and feet that do respond in obedience to you. And our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Stay tuned for our sermon. The flood is over. We're given the sign of the rainbow. And Noah and his family lived happily ever after. Nope. Oops. Wrong story ending. We are wrapping up our series on the beginnings found in Genesis. Noah and his family have finally made it off of the ark. And unfortunately, everything is not sunshine and rainbows from this point forward. Sin did not end with the flood. It came off the boat. It came off the ark with Noah and his sons. Even righteous Noah takes a stumble. 
Noah is a man of the soil. He plants a vineyard, and at some point after the vines get tall enough and the grapes grow, he makes himself some wine, and he gets drunk, and he's naked in his drunkenness. This is the first instance where we see someone get drunk in the Bible. His son Ham, which or is also known as Canaan, his son Ham is cursed from this, story, this part of the story. Noah's other sons, Shem and Japheth, cover up, na- cover up Noah and his nakedness, and Noah blesses them, and it tells them that they can expand their territory. This particular part of Noah and his son's story has often been used throughout history as a, an argument in support of human slavery. That is not God's intention here. That is not what this story is about. All people, all people are made in the image and likeness of God, period, end of story. We as human beings have gotten things way out of whack. Yes, slavery is no longer legal here in the United States, but there are still ripple effects that are present in our world. We have brothers and sisters around the globe who are still trapped in slavery today. There are places where slavery is still legal today. Modern day slavery still exists. Right now, at this time, there are more people in slavery than there have been throughout human history. Modern day slavery still exists, believe it or not. I encourage you to go check out the End It Movement, so enditmovement.com or the A21 campaign to find out more about how people are still trapped in slavery today and about ways how you can help to end modern day slavery and human trafficking. So go do it. Back to Noah. This is not about trapping other people in slavery. That is not what God has in mind here. Genesis 10 gives us an account of what happens after the flood and the table of nations. It is the written lineage of Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So Noah's three sons that were on the ark with him. From Japheth, we see people who become maritime people. They like the water. They spread out into territories by their clans, within nations, and each one has their own language. From Ham comes familiar names such as Egypt and Canaan. Ham's son Cush was the father of a guy named Nimrod. Have you heard that? Someone being called a Nimrod? It's not a good thing. In Genesis um, chapter 10 verse 8, Cush was the father of Nimrod who became a mighty warrior on the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. That is why it is said, like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before the Lord. Nimrod was a mighty warrior before the Lord. He was a hunter before the Lord. This is not a good thing. Remember, God said not to kill other people, but that's not what Nimrod is doing. He's being a Nimrod. He's being a killer. He's not using the brain that God gave him, right? Nimrod's family line follows with a lot of hostility. There's hostility for generations to come from Nimrod's family line. The centers of Nimrod's kingdom include places like Babylon and Assyria. You might remember the story of Daniel and the lion's den or Daniel and his friends that were in the furnace. That happened in Babylon. Nimrod built Nineveh, the place where God would call Jonah to go because it was so wicked. (laughs) Egypt is the father of a number of people groups, including the Philistines. The ones that would produce Goliath, the guy that would come out and fight with David, and David would kill him with a stone. Another, Lots of other people groups come from Egypt as well. The Hivites, the Hittites, the Jebusites, and many more people who would be the enemies of Israel come from Ham's family line. Shem, Noah's other son, has a lot of descendants as well, and his descendants are called Semites. Abraham, David, and Jesus all descend from Shem. Ham's descendants settled in Canaan, Egypt, and the rest of Africa. Japheth's descendants settled for the most part in Europe and Asia Minor, what we know as those parts today. From Shem's family line, we see people groups that we know as the Hebrews, the Chaldeans, the Assyrians, the Persians, the Syrians. From Ham's family line, we see the Canaanites, Egyptians, Philistines, Hittites, Amorites. And from Japheth's family line, we get Greeks, Thracians, Scythians. 
all kinds of people come from the, these three guys who were on the ark with Noah, from Noah's three sons. In Genesis chapter 10, verse 32, these are the clans of Noah's sons according to their lines of descent within their nations. From these nations spread out over the earth after the flood. So three guys, their family lines start to spread about. In Genesis chapter 11, we see the story of the Tower of Babel. Now the whole world had one language and a common speech. As people moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and settled there. They said to each other, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. They said, Come, let us build for ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. The Lord said, If as one people speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there all over the earth and they stopped building the city. That is why it's called Babel, because the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there, the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. People were being too smart for their own good. They were going against what God had told them to do after the flood. In Genesis 9:11, then God blessed Noah and his sons, saying to them, Be fruitful and increase in number and fill the earth. Hmm. They forgot that part. God told Noah and his family to fill the earth. And what are they doing? They're building a tower. Going to be all in one place. That is not what God said to do. They're building a tower for themselves. This could be a sign that maybe they were afraid that they, they coat the tower in tar. This would make it waterproof like the ark was. Maybe they are afraid that water is going to come down and flood the earth again. So they try to make a place that would be high enough for them to get when the waters come and it would be waterproof. We're not quite sure, but they're building this tower for themselves, not for God. The people are not trusting God and what God had told them to do. They are trusting in themselves. They are living self-centered and not God-centered. Their gaze is inward and not outward or upward. History is repeating itself. In Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 9, What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. We see that here. There is nothing new under the sun, even after the flood. People are self-centered again. They are making a monument, not to God, but to themselves. They're not worried about God's greatness and what God would have for them to do. They are worried about what they want to do and what's going to protect them or what they think will protect them from whatever might come ahead. They don't want to scatter out. They don't want to do what God has told them to do. God said to fill the earth. Babel begins. The language is confused and people are scattered about. The people stopped building the city that they had started building and began doing what God had told them to do in the first place. After Babel, we read more about Shem's family line. From Shem's family line comes a man named Terah. In Genesis 11:26, After Terah had lived 70 years, he became father of Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. This is the account of Terah's family line. Terah became the father of Abraham, Nahor, and Haran, and Haran became the father of Lot. While his father Terah was still alive, Haran died in Ur of the Chaldeans in the land of his birth. Abraham and Nahor both married. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the wife of Nahor's wife was Milcah. She was the daughter of Haran, the father of both Milcah and Iscah. Now Sarai was childless because she was not able to conceive. Terah took his son Abram, his grandson Lot of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, the wife of his son Abram, and together they set out from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to Canaan. But when they came to Haran, 
they settled there. Terah lived 205 years and he died in Haran. Any of those names sound familiar? We may not know Shem, Ham, or Japheth, the three stages of Noah's Ark, but here we hear some names that sound familiar or begin to sound familiar to us. Abram would become Father Abraham. Sarah would become Mother Sarah, the mother and father of Israel, the place where God's people, God's chosen people would descend from the family line that Jesus and David would come from generations later. This is the beginning of their family tree after the flood. So what can we learn here from this line of descendants? There's a continuation of sin that happens after the flood. Even though Noah was a righteous man who found grace and favor in the eyes of the Lord, he still sinned. He got off the boat, built himself a vineyard, and he got drunk. Noah was not perfect. He found favor in God's sight, but he was not perfect. It means there is also grace for us to be found when we are not perfect and don't do things perfectly. God still loves us. Um, We're not alone when we sin, but we know that we can find mercy and forgiveness in the arms of our Savior. That's why Christ came. We can also see that conforming to the habits of this world can be costly. The people wanted to build a tower for themselves, for their namesake, not for God's namesake. They weren't doing what God had told them to do. They were worried about themselves and what might happen up ahead, and it cost them the ability to be able to to communicate with one another. They were scattered across the earth. Communication has been complicated for us as human beings since the Tower of Babel. There's still a lot of babbling going on. We are made for so much more than the towers that we try to create for ourselves. We were not meant to live self-centered lives. We we're meant to live God-centered lives. When we turn inward, pride and selfishness thrive in us. But when we turn outward and upward, God's grace is found. New mercy can be received and found. Kindness and compassion abound in our world when we're not so self-focused, when we begin to see our world and to look up to God for our help. We're able to communicate better with God as well when we take our eyes off ourselves and fix our eyes on Jesus. And it is better for us to be God protected than self protected. Their plan to build this tower ended up not helping them at all. It hurt them in the long run. It's better for us to trust God and to trust God's plan and to listen to God's voice than to try to do what our own plan is telling us to do. After the Tower of Babel, we read about Terah and his family line. Their family set out for the land of Canaan, the land that would be promised to God's people, to Israel, to his chosen people later on in Genesis. Terah set out for there, along with Abram and Sarai and Lot, but Terah never made it there. Instead, he settled halfway in Haran. He settled there, and that's where he lived out his days, and he died there, never reaching the land that God would promise to his people. I wonder, where might we have settled in our lives? Are there places where God has called us, but we have settled short of it? Are there places in our lives where we have become comfortable and complacent, where we have stopped pushing out to the places where God is calling us, where do we need to step out in faith? What might need stirring up within us again so that we continue to move forward and move out to the places where God has called us? May the Holy Spirit nudge us to the places where God is calling us. May the Holy Spirit nudge us in the places where we need to get moving again, or we need to get moved out of our comfort zones and trust in our comforter, to trust in God's spirit who leads us and guides us and goes with us. Where do we need to move? And also, where might we need to wait? This stop in Haran could have been a waiting place for Abram as he waited for God to call him forth to the promised land. Perhaps it was a stop on the way to where they were going. 
a time for God to be preparing Abram and Sarah for what was ahead. Not quite sure, but perhaps this was a waiting spot for them. And so where might we too need to wait? In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, Solomon pens these words. There's a time for everything, a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. We know that one well now. A time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. And now you might be singing a song, but on this weekend where the time clock changes for us, Perhaps we need a reminder that there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. But what season of time are we in ourselves and as the church? Perhaps it's a time where God is telling us to move. Or perhaps it's a time where God is saying, wait. Like Tara, is this a time and a place for us to settle in, to get comfortable and complacent? Or is it a time for us to keep going, to keep moving? Have we stopped short of where God is calling us to go? Or like Abraham, is it a time for us to pause and to wait and be preparing for whatever God might have ahead? Is this a time of transition and a time of waiting for us? Is it a time of preparation for the season and calling that God has on us? For what's ahead. Whatever season you are in or we are in as the body of Christ, we're called to trust, to trust in the one who is good all the time. So may we put our faith, our hope, and our trust in him. May our lives be God-centered and not self-centered. May we not settle. May we keep pushing forward to God's best for our lives as we trust in him day by day, step by step, moment by moment, walk faithfully with him. Let's pray. God, help us to keep you as the first priority of our lives. May we not settle for less than your best for us. Nudge us in the places where our faith has become complacent. Help us to seek you and to keep seeking you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you again for joining us in our online worship this week. You're welcome to join us in person at nine o'clock at Long Creek, which we are back in the sanctuary. Praise the Lord. We are meeting in the sanctuary again as of this morning. So you're welcome to join us next Sunday morning at nine o'clock in the sanctuary. You're also welcome to join us at Dalton City United Methodist Church at 1045 on Sunday mornings. I'll also continue to meet you right here on Sundays or whatever day of the week you find yourself watching. A couple of bits of information for those of you who are part of our in-person congregations. At Long Creek, we are beginning to partner with the Public Painted Pianos Project of Macon County. Uh, I'm looking so forward to this thing. Um, If you haven't heard about it, go check it out on Facebook. There's a Facebook page, Public Painted Pianos Project of Macon County. Gail Fike has begun this project helping to spread some hope and joy through the gift of music. Um, Old pianos are donated and painted by local artists and then given to a local place so they might be used by the people who are served wherever this piano is located. Particularly at Long Creek beginning this week on Monday, our piano is being delivered. We'll have a local artist that's going to be coming in over the next few weeks and painting this piano. So if you join us in person, you get to see it in person. I will also try to post some pictures on our Facebook page as we watch the transformation take place from this old piano that's been donated to being primed and sanded, primed, painted, and then put out for public use. It's going to be a beautiful thing. 
that our church is going to get to be a part of. So I'm so thankful for this happening in our church building. Also, me, Pastor Haley, is participating in raising money for scholarships for church camp. Church camp has been a huge part of my own faith journey. And so I'm trying to give back through walking 524 miles in the next six months. Myself, along with my sister and two of my best friends, Liz and Marley, are joining in with me. And I know one of you at least is watching today. So thank you for that. So over the next six months, we are walking 524 miles, which is a round trip from Little Grassy and Macanda all the way up to East Bay, near Hudson, Bloomington, Illinois area. So we are walking, walking, walking to raise money and awareness for church camp scholarship funds. So if you would like to give, I have a goal of $524 at least to be given to church camp funds. I've got about $300 more to reach my goal right now. So if you would like to help out, let me know. I can get you the link to the link, the link to help donate to church camp scholarships and it would make my heart so happy. Um, and if you can't give financially, give your prayers if you would. Just we really appreciate your support and helping kids get connected to Christ through church camp. So I'm excited about the Lake to Bay Run Walk team. Thank you again for joining in our online worship today. Hope to see you soon in person or back here. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May you dream dreams and see visions and find your place in his kingdom. God bless you. Have a fantastic week.